Thank that. you, Maria. I'm very excited uh, to be here to give you guys this talk. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to me a lot for you guys, and I'm very excited for what he has for you guys tonight. The first thing that I would like to do is have a couple of my missionary friends uh, come pass these out, if you would. I just wanted to put together a little paper uh, for you guys to take home, because my real goal for this talk tonight is for you guys to kind of have an idea of what it looks like to live the life of a saint practically in your summer lives. Summer is coming up. You guys are going to be in school. You're not going to be around the vine as much. So I wanted to help you guys out. Um, I will say I don't want you guys to get too um, distracted by that because I didn't follow my plan on the slideshow. I'll be giving this talk exactly on that paper. That's more for you guys to take home. Uh, but if you guys have papers or pencils, you want to take notes, that'll be perfect for that. But I wanted to start this talk out um, with you guys just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what this talk's going to look like. I want this talk to be a little interactive. I really don't want to give up, stand up here and give you guys a nice lecture about anything because nobody wants to hear that and I don't want you guys to be bored and falling asleep. So today we're going to get some crowd engagement. I want you guys to be engaged, okay? The, the only talks I've given up to this point were to middle schoolers, but I think they set up a pretty high bar for you guys. They're pretty engaged. They like to give good responses, so I'm hoping to get the same from you guys. So first thing um, that we're going to talk about tonight um, is that I want to give this talk um, more from a perspective of somebody who's lived life for you guys. I know I heard a lot of talks um, from the Vine here and there. Um, from Damascus and other places, um, but I just didn't really understand exactly how I should live that. Like, it sounded great in, in my mind. It sounded great, um, and it looked great, but I didn't know how to live it. They always say, a great thing Kara likes to point out is that we're the young saints of Columbus. If you guys wanted to know what a saint looks like, if you guys have never seen a saint, look to the neighbor next to you. They're standing right next to you. You guys have saints all around you. But I was like, what does that actually look like for me? You know, she says we're the young saints of Columbus, but what does that really mean? There were some, some other things that frustrated me a little bit, too, about things. Like, they said that we could hear God's voice, but I'm like, I can't hear God's voice. Like, I've tried so hard, and it just doesn't work. So I'm hoping today to be able to solve some of those problems for you guys through the way that I've lived in and figured it out. Um, and the way that I've been able to live through my past four years of high school. I believe, um, as we're talking about saints today, I believe that most people give up bef before they can even get anywhere. You guys have heard a great talk from Alex uh, yesterday, or last week, yeah. You guys heard a great talk from Alex about what the lives of the saints look like, like what they did. Some of them were pretty relatable to you guys. Married people, there weren't a lot of, you know, nuns and other people that he was talking about. He was talking about practically people that you guys can look like. I think that was a great way to, to move into this talk that I want to give today. Uh, because I want you guys to understand something that I heard. It was a really great quote the other day is that if you don't give up, you can't lose. You won't lose. You won't lose the, the battle of faith. You won't lose the ability to become a saint if you don't give up, if you just keep fighting. Most people, I feel like, think that you have to be perfect, that the lives of the saints were these perfect people that looked amazing. You guys hear the highlights of people that levitated, people that bilocated, people that healed people, like all these great things. But what you don't hear about is the hard things that they went through, the things that they fought, the things that you guys deal with, and you're like, what the heck? The saints look like perfect people. But I want you guys to understand that the saints weren't perfect people. You guys might struggle with things like depression. You know, the saints struggled with depression. Uh, St. Saint, Saint Paul of the Cross, he, so, he struggled with depression. He, he became a very depressed man. I think he went 45 years without hearing anything from the Lord. He was in deep spiritual desolation. But he stuck with it. He kept going. He didn't give up. Um... Let's see. Uh, St. Thomas had a deep lack of faith. I mean, he asked the Lord. He's like, I have, to, I have to touch your hands and, like, into the side in order for me to believe. Like, that's a deep lack of faith. Somebody who struggled with, like, impurity, kind of like a porn addiction was St. John. Any of you guys wondering if saints can have, you know, impure temptations and things? St. John, still a saint. He struggled with the same thing. St. Therese of Lisieux struggled with both anxiety and overthinking a lot. St. Nicholas struggled with pride. St. Catherine of Siena, along with St. Jerome and Francis de Sales, all had a bad temper. I remember hearing a great story of a saint one time who, who literally went and knocked a guy out because he was doing something wrong. Like Some, some saints had some deep tempers. Um, for any of you guys who may struggle with OCD, Oscar Romeo, St. Oscar Romeo also struggled with that. But I think the, the difference that people don't seem to understand is that like when they fall into these things, the difference between what your life might look like right now, because you guys aren't far. 
from sanctity. The difference between the saints and how they lived and how you guys lived and how they lived is that they didn't stop. They, they fell into that porn addiction or whatever it was that they had. They fell, and then they're like, all right, what am I going to do next? They got back up, and they tried again. I think the key, to, the key to sanctity that people don't understand is that it's not, it's not a perfection that the Lord expects. Some people think that I have to be perfect. My life doesn't look like the life of a saint because I struggle with X, Y, Z. You just have to get back up. Keep going. Try again with the Lord. The real key, um, in my opinion, is surrender. You, you just have to surrender to the Lord. I know for myself, I struggle with it sometimes. Uh, I was going through a great Lenten devotional, and it, the, the whole thing was just talking about surrender. Like, you think you can do it on your own, you're wrong. You think you can do, you know, the, these really hard things. You can, you can go up against um, tortures, you know, for, for men who really like hardcore things. You can't. You will break down. The Lord is the one that strengthens. The Lord is the one that strengthens. If you, if you want to get back up, you have to get on your knees first. Get on your knees before the Lord and say, Lord, I can't do it anymore. That's when the Lord works. That's when his strength picks you up. That's how you keep going. You have to be willing to surrender. I had a, a great saint that I was learning about the other day. His name was Walter Chiswick. So he was a pretty um, he was a pretty deep man. He would you know swim a mile through a frozen lake every day before seminary. He would get on five mile runs at 5 a.m. in the morning. So he's like he's a pretty hardcore dude. He was like I got this, okay? Like I'm gonna go over to it was Russia at the time and I'm gonna rock star that faith whole thing and teach people what it's like to to be the life of a a missionary. So he got there, and he got to the torturers, and he, he got to them, and they were trying to get information from him, and he's like, nope. He's like, I got this. So he got a year into it, and he was like, out of his kind of brain sent at the point, he was like, Lord, you said in the Bible that I will strengthen you, that you will strengthen me in my time of need. He's like, well, I'm at my time of need right now, so you got to strengthen me. So he walked into there, and he ended up confessing to things that he didn't believe. He ended up confessing to things like he was a Vatican spy or that he didn't believe in the church, that the church wasn't, wasn't, wasn't real or whatever. He confessed to these things that he didn't believe because he was at his wit's end. So he got really mad at the Lord, like, Lord, what the heck? You told me that you would strengthen me in these times of need. And he realized in that moment that his problem was he didn't really surrender to the Lord. He said, Lord, this is what you promised to me, but he didn't really believe him. He was trying to rely on his own strength. All the things that he had trained for, he was relying on that. He didn't really say, Lord, right now I can't do it. And pick it up. And it was in that moment that he realized the greatest grace. The greatest grace that you can ever have is just to surrender to the Lord, to ask for his strength. Because that's the key. If you want to be a saint, you have to stop relying on your own strength and realize that the Lord will strengthen you because his grace will strengthen you. So we're talking about how to live the life of a saint. I believe wholeheartedly that the life is just a massive mental battle. I truly do. It's two choices that you guys have, okay? God's view or Satan's view. In any scenario you're at, you... And that, that, I feel like, is the biggest difference between the, us and the, and the saints, is the saints were always so happy. They were happy because of one reason. They chose to be happy. I heard a, a great Instagram reel the other day, and it, was, and it was like he was praying to the Lord, and he's like, Lord, can you please grant me happiness? And the Lord's like, no. He's like, I give you grace as you have to choose to be happy because it's your choice. It's, it's your choice uh, to do that. So I'll, I'll give you guys um, an example. Say that you're stuck in traffic, okay? You can take Satan's view and be like, what the heck? Why am I stuck in traffic? I'm going to be late for work. I'm going to be all these things. Like, what the heck? Start honking the horn. Like, guys, we got to get moving. You could do that, all right? That's not going to take you anywhere. You could take God's view in this scenario, okay? And you could be like, this looks like a great opportunity for me to learn impatience, actually. I hope, you know, whatever's causing this traffic is, I hope they're okay. You know, maybe there's, there's some accident or something. You could pray for them. You could offer up any moment. There's always two choices. The saint in that scenario would be choosing to be happy in this moment. Like, well, this is actually a great opportunity for me to get out some prayer. I could pull out my Bible, start doing some reading in the middle of this traffic, you know, whatever it is. Right? You always have the choice. I want you guys to tell me. Anybody give me a definition of what a saint is? Anybody have an idea? Yes? Yes, that's really good. She's... She said that it's a, a consecrated person who lives in heaven. That's actually perfect if you'd pull up the next slide for me, please. Um, someone is actually somebody who practiced heroic virtue. Somebody like St. Joan of Arc, who had this really massive sword and, and went and fought battles for the Lord. That was a great time. St. Padre Pio, one of my favorite saints. The guy was flying around and levitating, telling American bombers to get out of here. That was a fun one. I mean, this is what you guys, 
the guys would imagine, right? The saints, the ones who practice heroic virtue. Um, this is what the, the catechism has to say uh, about saints, which I'm not going to read because I want to give you guys a new definition. All right, th this is what the catechism, you guys are welcome to read it if you want. It's basically just saying somebody who's canonized in heaven. That, that's great. We all want to be canonized in heaven, but personally, there are plenty of people in heaven who are saints who are not canonized. So we're going we're gonna to pull up our next definition, if you would, Matthew. Thank you. Anybody want to take a guess at what that missing word is? Yes, go for it. That is actually really close. Matthew, if you would, please. It's actually wills, but says is really close to wills, so we're going to give her that one. A saint is someone who, who does what God wills as he wills it because he wills it. It's simple as that. If you guys want to know the secret to holiness, I don't remember what saint that was. That was a quote from one saint. But if you guys want to know from a saint himself, this is the key to holiness right here. It's just doing God's will. That's not that hard. I know some people think being a saint is really hard. I thought being a saint was really hard. And from my perspective, I thought I looked at the saints and I said they, they died for the faith. They were out there levitating. I've said that a couple of times. I mean, just saying, like, that looked like a really high bar to me. I'm like, I don't know how the heck I'm going to do that. I'm like, I think the easiest way for me to do this is to, to make my way over to, like, Europe and find somebody and get martyred for the faith. That seemed like the easiest way for me to become a saint. I'm just saying. That was, that was my goal at one point. But it, it really is that simple, guys, because I, I didn't know this. Be because God's will is, is different for every person, okay? God's will for you is going to look different than it is for me. And God's will in any moment could be something very simple. God's will in your moment could you would be sitting in this chair listening to my talk. Like, that's as simple as God's will. You could be becoming a saint right now by sitting in this chair. You could be doing God's will um, by making your bed in the morning. You know, it's not, it's not always these great things. Some people... There will come a point when it comes to vocations and stuff that, you're, that God's will will become a little bit more complex, maybe a little bit more out there that you'll have to step into it. But a lot of the times it's the daily tasks, the little things that the Lord's will, that really makes you a saint. That's, that's what my real goal for you guys tonight is just to understand that sainthood is obtainable. Because I never thought it was attainable. I really wanted to be a saint. That's why I wanted to go get martyred for the faith because that seemed like the most attainable way to get it, but I realize now that it's actually a lot more obtainable, and that's what I want you guys to understand, that doing God's will is not that hard. But you guys might be wondering, how can I actually live this out practically? Because that sounds great, Kyle. Living, doing God's will sounds great. Living it sounds great, but what does that actually mean? You can pull the next one. These are some, some resources you guys have, okay? Any of you and all of you have it. it there's a list in there on your paper you guys get to take home in case you, you forget. But Prayer. Prayer is the biggest one, okay? We're, we might get a little bit deeper into that one in a, in a later slide. But prayer is, is probably the, the biggest key. If you want to become a saint, if you want to be in heaven, guys, because at the end of the day, there's two options for you, okay? There's heaven and hell, okay? I want to be brutally honest with you guys. Nobody wants to go to hell, I don't think. Anybody here want to go to hell? I hope not. Um, everybody who goes to heaven is a saint, so you all got to become saints. So... Prayer is, is the easiest way. It's the most obtainable way to, to become a saint. It's the everyday life. Uh, some great forms of prayer that I, I particularly like, actually. You know, I'm going to ask you guys. What are some, some forms of prayer? Anybody want to wanna shout some out for me? That's a really good one. That's another good one. What do we call that? Lexio Divina. All right. Yes? Praying for the people. Intercession is a really good form of prayer. Anybody else? Silence is a really great prayer. Mass is an even better way to pray. Go to Mass, people. So, something you guys may not have heard that I learned about more recently that has really blessed my prayer life, something called mental prayer. Uh, I did not put up that, on, that up on there. I think I put it in there. But mental prayer. I did. Uh, mental, mental prayer is, is probably my favorite way to pray. It's basically just like recollecting your, your heart to God, your mind to God, and then asking, asking uh, like your favorite saints or Mary or other people to come in to your uh, mind and help guide you in your time of prayer. It's, it's really guided. It's basically just asking the Lord like, hey, how do you want me to pray today? And he'll take you somewhere in prayer, and you can work with that. You can even take that into the rosary. You can take mental prayer into the rosary. Like, you know, I'm praying with the, the first 
you know, a uh, glorious mystery, like, Mom, Mary, where do you want to take me in this? And she might take you out to the Sea of Galilee and be like, all right, we're going to learn something out here. It's a, it's a great way to pray. I love uh, mental prayer personally. The biggest one up here, though, that I think that you guys are going to really like is, is the Vine community. I put that up there. I want you guys to understand that having a community around you is the most important part. Besides having a relationship with God and, and praying, having a community around you is going to be the most important thing to becoming a saint, okay? The people standing next to you, uh, sitting next to you, are, are the easiest way for you to, to get to heaven because you see them living a life of sanctity. You want to do it. They see you doing it. You bring them up. You bring each other up. When you're, when you're down, when you're, low, when you're at your lowest point, that's when you need your, your brothers and sisters to pick you up. I know personally, uh, I have kind of felt that at times. You know, I'll be at home, like, trying to pray, pray the life, live the life, go to school, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, the world kind of pulls you down a little bit because at times it's a bit hard to live in the world. But then you come to the mass and you see your community. And then you get picked back up. You're like, the spirit comes back into you and you're here. Because these are people alive in the faith. You can see the Spirit is working here. That's your pick-me-up that you need sometimes. You can't abandon it. I think that if I were to have lived my whole high school career and I had never made it to the Vine once, I would look like a very different person because God has sustained me many times coming here. So I encourage you guys to build your community, to get brothers and sisters close to you, to stick close to here, keep coming back, get friends, meet with them outside of the Vine because that's going to be your lifeline when prayer's maybe not going so well, when maybe you don't want to pray in the morning and you need somebody to talk to about it, you need people to talk to about it. The sacraments are an amazing resource. Get to confession, get to mass most especially. If you have time to make it to adoration, do those things that are going to help, help you become a saint. You have all these resources available to you. The Bible, that's in every home in America as far as I'm concerned, pretty close anyway. Um... You can you can read that any time. It's it's an amazing resource. You guys have so many so many other things. Um, things on um, your phone like uh, Ascension Press, Hallow, uh, Gabby After Hours. Uh, some of you guys may know that. Probably most of you don't. He's a really great YouTuber. Really loves Mary. I would definitely encourage you guys to watch some of his videos because he is definitely going to be a saint one day. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. So we're going to talk about the first thing. That looks practical in your life, okay? So I've, I've actually learned a lot myself about how to be a saint. I'm very happy I gave this talk because I had to do a lot of research, and I learned a lot about being a saint myself. One of which, when I was watching a video, was imitating the saints. Probably should have thought of that one myself, but that's okay. Imitation of the saints, you may ask me what that looks like. Actually, if you guys pay attention to any of the pictures that I put up here, all of them are up there for a purpose. So this one, for example is talking about how you need to get to adoration, okay? What the, there's, there were two main things, two really big things that the saints did really well that made them saints, okay? One was they spent a huge amount of time before the Blessed Sacrament, either in adoration or Mass, okay? They prioritized God, okay? They didn't just go to Mass on Sunday. They made it during the week. They tried to make it to be with Jesus as much as possible because they realized in this world, you need Jesus. You need to be with him because this world, you'll never, you'll never live in this world. Satan's always going to attack you. He's always going to be out there trying to pull you down. And if, you're, if you see Jesus more, he'll be able to pick you up. You'll be able to get to know him better. Uh, the other thing that the saints did really well, the second thing the saints did really well was, was Mary. Every saint had some connection to Mary in any way, okay? Mary was a very influential um, person when it came to all the saints. Some of the bigger known saints when it came to Mary would be like Maximilian Colby or St. Louis de Montfort, people who really stepped into the Marian devotion. But every saint in, in some way stepped into Marian devotion. Most of the saints, if you, you um, look at the way they lived their lives, prayed at least three rosaries a day, generally speaking, because that, that is a really great way um, to get a saint. Now, I'm not saying you guys have to pray three rosaries a day because that is kind of hard. I personally only say one rosary every day. But maybe I'll get to three one day. But it's, it's really not that, that hard because you just have to find time. I think a lot of people in their lives, they, they think, I just don't have time for that. I don't have time for prayer. I don't have time to say the rosary. And quite frankly, I'm here to be honest with you guys. You have time. You have 24 hours each day to live. Generally, you spend about seven to eight sleeping, but you have, you know, the rest of those 14 hours to do whatever you want, okay? You choose. Like I said, life is a big mental battle. You have the choice. I want you guys to understand that by the end of this talk. I want to reshape your understanding of what it means, okay? You have a choice. 
You choose what you do with your time. You choose, I want to go to soccer practice because I enjoy soccer. I want to go to band practice because I do band. Uh, you're kind of forced to go to school, so I won't throw that one out there. But you, ch you choose to spend time with your friends to do all these things, okay? You have the time. You choose to use it. You could choose to spend more time with God. Now, that can look different. Like, you could pray a rosary, for example, if you were trying to pray three rosaries a day. You could do it in a car. Many of you guys are in a car every day. You find time in the car to pray the rosary. You find time in the morning to do the rosary, maybe before bed. That's three instances during the day. You could have said a whole rosary. The rosary doesn't take that long. So that's what they usually did. Now, if you guys really wanted to step it up, okay, you guys, some of you who may be familiar with the rosary may wonder why the saints only said three rosaries a day because there's four sets of mysteries. That's because they didn't always have four sets of mysteries. So if you guys wanted to be better than some of the greatest saints, like St. Saint Alphonsus Liguori or, or any of those saints, you could pray four rosaries every day, okay? And you would now be holier than some of the greatest saints that, that lived, okay? Just going to put that one out there. All right, the saints also, however, had a lot of fun, okay? I know some people think that saints don't have fun, but that's not true. St. John Paul II loved rock climbing. Um, a lot of brothers and lay people who become saints, they like to play basketball. They like to do a lot of really fun things. So I just want you guys to know that, you know, even though you're spending a lot of time with Jesus, even though you're trying to increase your relationship with Mary, you still get to have fun hanging out with your friends. So one of the things that you guys have available to you that I think a lot of people underutilize is the gifts of the Spirit. I think a lot of people don't really know you have all the same gifts that the saints had. The, the Spirit is within you guys, okay? The biggest key that I think a lot of people don't, don't know is that you just have to ask for it. Many people just don't ask for it. Um, there was a, a great quote by somebody I heard the other day. And they were, there was like an image of Mary, and it was all the graces that were being poured uh, out to like the, the earth through her hands. And there were a bunch of gaps in between these. She's so like, why are all these gaps in between her rays? And they said, those are all the graces that nobody asked for. They're just sitting there waiting to be asked for. All you have to do is ask for them. They're available to you. Things like prophecy. I have stepped into that gift a lot while I've been at the Vine, something I've tried to grow into. And I can tell you guys from experience that it takes practice. You may not get it right on the first time. But the more you guys put, in, put them into practice, it's the biggest key. That's why I said you have to put them into practice. You guys have to actually practice them. You're not going to be perfect at them. The best people that hear the Lord's voice nowadays that are really good get it spot on every time. They used to get it wrong. They just kept going at it. They kept practicing. They eventually, you know, learned to hear the, God's, the Lord's voice. You have to learn how to hear his voice because there's many voices in your head. You have to learn how to discern them. Um, other things that you guys have available to you, um, one I'm attempting to exercise at the moment would be teaching, evangelizing, um, the gifts of faith, um, discernment. Those things are, are all available to you, though uh, healing, yes, healing is up there. That is one that a lot of you guys um, may not step into at the moment, but I would encourage you to. If you, find, if you find friends or people that may be a little bit injured, I would step into faith if, if you're willing to and pray for them because the Lord has the grace available to you. He wants to give it to you. He's waiting for you to ask for it. If you don't ask for it, he won't give it. Next slide, please. Um, next thing we can get up here is virtues. And I'm going to test you guys a little bit and see if you guys know the virtues because there is three missing up there. So anybody want to take a guess at what the first one is? No. Good try, though. Good try, though. Anybody else? No, that's not it either. All right. If any of you guys are familiar with the rosary, this is usually one you pray for the first three. That is it. First one is faith. Anybody got the next one? Hope. All right. Last one. Yes, those are the same thing. Charity and love are the same thing. Perfect. So, these are all the virtues, all right? Now, they're not always easy to practice. I want you guys to understand that I have um, realized that in my own life, that you want to be patient, you want to have a lot of faith, you want to have prudence, and you fail at a lot. But like I, said, like I said earlier, it's not about getting it perfect. It's about doing it. It's just about keep doing it. Okay, I'm going to do it, I'm going to fail. That's okay. I'll get up and I'll try again. That, that's the real key. Like, you know, I'm trying to be patient. The only way to learn patience is to find areas that test your patience. And you're probably going to fail, but you're growing in patience. Faith. Faith is a great one to put into practice, especially when you're trying to um, do, like, the gifts of the Spirit. It exercises a lot of faith to go over and pray over somebody for, like, a word or something. You have to practice it. You have to put it into practice if you want to get better at it. 
You have to have a personal relationship with God. Now, this is probably the, the biggest one that I want to hit with you guys today, is that God wants to have a personal relationship. Now, you guys have probably heard that before. If you've been to the Vine around long enough, you've probably heard. God wants to have a personal relationship with you. What does that mean? I know I didn't really know what that means. People told me that I could talk to God like he's a, like he's a friend to me, and that always frustrated me because I'm like, I can't talk to God like he's a friend because I don't know how I've tried, and he doesn't talk back to me. If you want to talk to God like, like he's your friend, okay, because he wants to be your friend. He wants to walk next to you. He wants to be with you at all times. If you want to do that, you have to actually know God as a friend. You have to know Jesus. Many people don't aren't able to pray with God. They're not able to have a relationship because they don't really know who God is. I'll tell you guys um, a good story. So at the middle of my high school um, career, usually uh, I think around sophomore, junior year, I had lost um, a good portion of my friends that were kind of the school friends. And I was like, but I'd always had a deep desire in my heart. I'm like, I want to have good Catholic friends that were strong in their face, somebody that could bring me up. And I just didn't have that at the time, you know, good Christian friends that I could go talk to about spiritual problems that I may have, you know, when my relationship with the Lord maybe is not going well, somebody I could talk to about it. But I didn't really have those people. So I found some great people at the Vine, and it was like, these are the people that I want to be, but I'm like, how do I grow into friendship? You know, I'm like a 16 or 17 years old, I've kind of, you know, forgot, like, how do you, how do you make a friend? Like, how does someone become close to a friend, Right. Like, you know, I don't know if people ever take the time to think about how friendships actually grow. But like, how do you actually, like, make a friendship? But so I eventually just, you know, started spending more time with some people, getting to know them, you know, sending out things. It was basically just hanging out. Like, that's the thing that I want, that I want to tell you guys you may not like me for, but it really just takes time, which is not something that I wanted to hear because time is a lot of waiting, and people don't really like waiting. I don't like waiting. And it was a lot of waiting. So, but what I, what I realized in that is that God's, God's relationship is the same. If you want to get to know God, you have to actually spend time with him. Not only in prayer, uh, but before him in the blessed sacrament, before him in the Eucharist. You have to actually devote time to spend with him. You have to read the word. I, I got to know God a lot better when I, you know, went, I did the, this thing by Ascension Press through Father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a Year. Loved that so much. I learned so much about the Bible, but in learning so much more about the Bible, I knew who Jesus was better. And then I spent more time in prayer, and the more I got to know Jesus, the more time I spent with him, I was able then to talk with him as a friend. Because that frustrated me for so long, because people would always tell me, you can talk to Jesus like a friend. I'm like, I can't do it. And like, now I can do it, because I'm actually Jesus' friend. I actually know Jesus as a friend. Pull up the next slide, Matthew. Practicing the presence of God. Probably my favorite thing. This is the newer thing in my life that I've been trying at the moment. Um, but I would really encourage any of you guys uh, to do this. This is a good book about it uh, by Brother Lawrence is his name. Great man. Uh, he, he talks about this practice of the presence. Basically what it is is imagining God with you at all times throughout the day. Um, I would basically like, you know, if I'm cooking in my kitchen or whatever, which is what he would do, he would just imagine God, you know, with him at all times. He'd be talking to him like he was his friend while he was doing these things, like, Lord, how you doing? He was at complete peace while he was in a hectic kitchen trying to give out food because he just knew God was at his side, and he was talking with him and having a great time. Like, so I, I've been trying to work at that, you know, relatively unsuccessfully at times, um, but I've been getting better the more I practice it because that's the biggest key is you just have to keep practicing it. When you fail, it's like, okay, I failed. It's fine. Let's go do it again because that's the only way you'll get better. You're never going to get better if you, don't, if you don't get back up. If I fail and I stay down, the devil's won. The devil's won if I stay down because the devil can't win if you stay up. Like I said before, you can't lose if you don't give up. If you stay on the ground, you've already lost because the devil actually has no power over you. The devil doesn't have any power over you. That's why he tries to trick you into giving up. He tries to get you to stay down because he understands that at the end of the day, if you don't give up, if you keep asking God, if you keep pleading out to God as his child, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I need your help. I'm weak. Please help me get back up. He knows that he can't be God. He knows that he can't be God. And he's trying to convince you that that it's better just to stay down because if you get back up, he's going to put you down again. Let him put me back down again because God's going to get me back up. And I'm going to get up at least one more time that he's going to pull me down. And that's when I'm going to get to heaven. Um, he pulled the next one, Matthew. 
It's all about doing the little things. This one is, is, a, really, is a really favorite one. I think you guys are going to like This is going to be um, more into the practicals that I really want to hit for you guys. Doing the simple things, okay? The simple things, the small things in life are what make saints. There were many saints that prided themselves in doing just the small things. There was um, a saint that just broomed. He just used a broom every day. He would just clean things up. That's what he did. There was St. Therese of Lisieux, famously known for her little way, the little things that she did. That, that was what made her a saint. That's what made them a saint. It's, it doesn't have to be the big things. It can be the small things, things that you guys do in your everyday life. Um, I'll give you guys some examples because I'm trying to make this practical for you guys when you're actually living your life. What does it mean to be a saint? If I'm at sports practice or I'm in a game, for example, and we're right before I start a game, maybe see if you can get your team to say a prayer before the game. Maybe just get them to do a little huddle. You know, pray before the game. If you're at school, um, don't be that, that person that has the, the clicky friendships that doesn't let anybody in. If you see somebody who's lonely out there, go talk to them. You know, be a friend to them. It's not, it, like, that's not really that hard, I feel like, um, for most people, uh, unless you're really shy and you are that person out in the corner. Um, it's not that hard to go talk to somebody. Doing the small things like helping grandma cross the street. I don't know if any of you guys have ever done that. Good experience, though. <laughs> cleaning your room, vacuuming, helping your mom, cleaning the dishes, any of those small little things. You guys, you know, may not think in the moment, but those things can all make you saints. It's all about being obedient to the Lord's will at any moment at any time. Choosing who you spend the most time with is probably one of the biggest decisions. Like when we talk about decisions to make, this is probably one of the biggest ones that you're going to hit. Because I, I heard uh, somebody say one time, it may have been Kara, your, your personality is basically made up of the five people that you spend the most time with. So you're going to look like who you spend more time with. And if I spend more time with Jesus, like in prayer, in, in mass, in sacraments, or whatever it is, then I'm going to look more like Jesus because naturally I'm now accustomed to what he does. I'm going to look more like him. If you spend more time with your people at the Vine community, that are also trying to live a life of holiness, then you're going to look more like them. If you prioritize that time, if you prioritize the time, however, like with more worldly friends, more people in school that are trying to drag you down, that are, you know, doing things that they shouldn't be doing, that are, that are out being really mean to people or whatever, then you're going to look more like them. That's just how it is. I've, I've always tried to be like that person that can be with the people that do things that are really hard, but honestly, I have learned that it is hard when you're around those people to not fall with them because it's what they're all doing. Some people can do it. I think I've done it relatively successfully, but it's hard. So, But when I spend time with my Vine community people, I get uplifted. I get built up. You have to choose wisely um, who you spend your time with. So to wrap this, this talk up, I just want you guys to know that it is possible for you guys as high schoolers to live saintly lives. It's not, it's not that difficult. It's not that hard. Like, obviously, you're going to have to make some hard decisions. You know, you're going to have to choose the Lord versus choosing Satan. That can be hard sometimes, but it's relatively simple. I've tried to give you guys uh, a couple examples here and there. Um, so that you guys can hopefully live it, because you're about to go into summer. You're about to have a lot of extra time on your hands that you didn't have when you were in the school. And so I'm encouraging you guys to use that time to grow in holiness, to pray a little bit more, maybe to get to know the Lord more. Maybe, if possible, try to go to Mass more than once per week. Instead of just going on Sunday, maybe try to make it during the week, something like that. Just the small things. I progressed probably just a little bit every year through high school till you know, now I, I do go to Mass more than once a Sunday. I pray a good amount during the day. I started to, but I didn't do it all at once. I started praying the rosary when I was a freshman. Then maybe I started praying more when I was a sophomore. I started um, something else when I was a junior. And then when I was a senior, I started going to Mass. But it was the small progressions, the small things. So I just encourage you guys, you know, throughout this summer, throughout your high school career, just to make those small adjustments, those small things that will lead you to sanctity because not all of you are going to be called to be the flashy big saints that levitate in you. I'm, I'm quite sure some of you will be. I'm going to be looking at some of you in the future and, and seeing you guys levitating. I'm quite sure of it. But not everybody is called to that. 
And so I want you guys to understand that it's not a really high bar that you have to go get martyred to be a saint like I may have thought when I was younger. You can live it practically, and I've hoped that I've helped you guys learn a little bit more about what that looks like.